distinguished panelists and those who have joined us on virtual platforms a good evening and welcome to all of you to the webinar on indian theatrical styles being organized in the azadi ka amrit mahotsav week before we start the webinar i would request consul general shri amit kumar ji for his opening remarks sir um thank you avinjit and i would like to extend warm welcome to all the panelists and all viewers who have joined us virtually today um we are organizing um, regular activities as part of the azadi ka amrit mahotsav which you know is to commemorate the 75 years of uh, our independence uh, our key focus uh, is to engage and involve the indian diaspora and friends of india in, in the us midwest in planning and implementing such activities and to basically showcase um, the rich history and culture of our country freedom and struggle our national accomplishments achievements of the diaspora locally and their contribution to uh, preservation and promotion of indian cultural heritage and their contribution to india us relations um, as my colleague mentioned the, this is a amrit mahotsav week that we have organized and as part of that week we already have had events commemorating the janjati of gorab divas we had a demonstration of a hands only cardio pulmonary resuscitation process a technique that was honed by uh, doctors from us and india jointly uh, we also had a webinar on importance of ayurveda and yesterday we had a lecture on hindustani classical music as part of the india lecture series uh, i am really delighted that we have a very distinguished uh, panel of artists who who have ex extensive experience of theater and uh, while the moderator will introduce them in greater detail i just wanted to acknowledge them uh, mr anurag anurag misra raj founding member of drama tech usa ms alka sharma founder of mandi theater uh, ms promila kumar founder of ekjut theater and ms sovik datta would be uh, moderating this webinar um these artists have been engaged in theater for several decades and have ex extensive experience of uh, direction acting production stage setup light sound music and etc et so i think they are well placed to talk about different theater styles of india and i'm looking forward to hearing their insights on as well as experiences of um, indian theater in the us midwest uh, and so i hand over back to you ranjit uh, thank you very much for your kind words sir and these are always very encouraging for us uh, now i would request uh, mr sovik datta who is the moderator to start this webinar thank you ranjit ji um it is a real honor to be here um i'll begin with the famous words uh of a great uh, theater personality terence man movies will make you famous television will make you rich but theater will make you good from bharat muni's natya shastra around uh, 500 bc to zoom theaters of 2021 indian theater has survived the test of time good evening everyone i am sovik datta the moderator of today's discussion it is my utmost honor to moderate today's discussion organized by the honorable consul general of india in chicago on theater forms of india the panelists today are founders and founding members of three primary prominent theater groups in chicago land alka sharma from mandi theater promila kumar from ekjut theater anurag mishraj from dramatic usa i have personally had a rare privilege of knowing these three stalwarts personally over years and have closely seen them create magic on stage without further ado let me dive into the discussion so uh, let me introduce uh, alka sharma alka ji needs no introduction in the world of theater in chicago land 
She is the founder of Mandi Theatre. And braving the pandemic, this year she hosted the Theatre Festival in Chicago. She is not only an immensely creative person, but also an immensely positive and caring individual. Alganji, my first question to you is about your views on contemporary Indian theatre and especially role of theatre when it comes to supporting social issues and causes. Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Shavik. And first of all, I would like to thank Honorable C.G. Amit Kumarji and his team for organizing this webinar. This is a very much needed topic and which needs to be discussed more often. So let me begin with uh, our contemporary theater, uh, especially our old theater, old Indian theater, um, Sanskrit theater, urban theater. So this was the beginning of Indian theater. As you all know, there were two different great traditional theaters were in existence in the beginning. One was Greek theater and one was the Indian theater. Many says that Indian theater started around second or third century BC when Bharat Muni wrote Natya Shastra. So Shavik, you just mentioned Natya Shastra and I would like to uh, uh, make a note of this. There was another scholar, Sri Nemi Chand Jain, who said the Indian theater, our Indian theater started almost like thousand years BC and is almost 3000 years old. It is valid because if you see our Rigvedas are written in like dialogue format and our Natya Shastra has like 37 chapters covering all the topics, including the music, acting, props and all the rasas. So golden period of Indian classical theater, Indian classical drama, Sanskrit drama was from second century BC to 10th century AD. When, when we had great writers like Bhas, Bodhayan, Shudrak, uh, Bhave Bhuti, and Kalidasa. And coming back to like later period when uh, Sanskrit drama, our uh, Indian theater, our Indian classical theater started to decline a little bit. It was because invasion of foreigners like uh, Shak, Hoon, and all and decline of the language. So if you don't have a language, how can the theater survive? And that was the time with the decline of uh, urban Sanskrit theater, folk theater started to flourish using the same elements of Sanskrit theater, music, dance, and singing, including Sutradhar. So we will come on to this folk theater later on with Anuragji. He will cover this topic. Later on, again, over the period of like next 300 years, more invaders came into India, Europeans, French, Britishers. So I will talk about uh, how our theater got influenced by the Britishers. So there were, uh, uh, there was this touring traveling theater companies. Um, they had three centers, Bombay, Madras, and Kolkata. I mean, Calcutta. So what happened, we were so influenced by uh, this, uh, uh, this British theater, we, we, were, we started to copy their drama and took on to uh, some extent their aesthetics, their structure, and, and started copying the Western drama. And this was new because until this came, performance did not take place on a proscenium stage, you know. So coming back to the contemporary theater, the meaning of theater in India has changed after we got our independence. There was this movement called uh, Theater of Roots because we felt the need to develop a theater that did not follow British models, but was in some way Indians. And I would like to name some of the great theater personalities who started this uh, uh, movement. There was K. N. Panikkar, Habib Tanvir, Vijay Tendulkar, Girish Karnad. So post-independence, our theater was like a logical way of expressing democratic ideas in the form of dance, music, dialogues, and actions. So basically, there were two types of theaters, post-independence, urban and rural. 
urban was like mainly focused on political and social scenario of independent india and rural was like concentrating only on religious and historical play so in my opinion uh, shavik i would say indian theater is not conflict oriented but transformation oriented it is storytelling it is the best way to highlight what you stand for and over the year india has developed a lot so after we got our independence there have been like many brilliant changes in 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 terms of theater nsd was founded national school of drama it was founded in 1959 and i would like to share this information with our viewer that nsd is one of the foremost theater training institutions in the world and the only one of its kind in india fully financed by ministry of culture government of india so thanks to government of india for for uh, for this initiative back in 1959 and uh, later on there were many other achievements uh, two of them i would like to mention is uh, we do host so many theater festivals in india uh, just to ensure that theater doesn't become a lost art be it bharangam bharat rang mahotsav be it purple umbrella theater festival be it prithvi theater festival be it international theater festival of kerala so we should be proud of our rich heritage rich culture and and there is this international theater institute iti unesco each year in the month of march on 27th march we celebrate world theater day and during that time they invite one or the other theater artist from around the world for uh, as world theater day message authors so in 2002 they invited shri girish kanar ji and in 2018 they invited shri ram gopal bajaj and that was an honor for us because now now the world knows about indian theater and even back in 80s i would like to mention about this group nipa rangmandali lucknow they were invited to perform at norway theater festival where they performed bodhayans bhagavad jukkam in uh, which which was originally written in sanskrit they performed this in hindi and that was like quite an achievement especially when no one in the audience was able to understood hindi but they really liked it so much they met one other theater um, artist there and they were invited again to perform this play in finland in finnish along with the finnish artists so that that is what our rich culture is that is what our heritage is so growth of india globally has happened after independence a lot especially when when we started to understand what actually theater is uh, according to me what is written in the natya shastra it is in hindi ki duniya mein aisi koi shilp gana uh, gyan aur kala nahi hai jo rang manch mein na ho so talking about the theater festival in the month of march in 2015 uh, i can say this proudly when the consulate invited us to perform at the consulate during that week when the theater festival was going uh, uh, during the week uh, world theater day was going on and that time asif said was our consulate general and later on shri uh, sudhakar dalela ji and now shri amit kumar ji i really appreciate the efforts taken by uh, uh, our, our our consulate like we say we are dedicated to produce the classics of indian dramatic literature as well as we are also uh, in the process of and we have produced thought provoking uh, uh, intelligent as well as uh, uh, like our, our historical rich in history plays and around the usa there are so many good hindi and non hindi theater groups including um, hindi rangmanch in north carolina ivan theatrics and isha in washington dc spotlight columbus natak in california and coming back to midwest we have mylets michigan literary and theatrical society and we have exude in chicago we have dramatech usa in chicago and we have rasaka theater company so all together all of us 
we we all are trying to uh, uh, bring in back the rich heritage of india uh, uh, to uh, to usa uh, and that that was the basic reason when we started this theater festival and um, as a powerful medium of uh, social integration and upliftment all of these theaters i think we aim to use theater to connect with people on various issues as well as we are on a mission to preserve india's rich culture so uh, i mean today i know today theater is struggling to find a new language and and the most interesting thing is that this search is taking place before our eyes but we are learning from it and we are progressing we have learned new ways and i think uh, uh, i think today uh, audience is not more demanding but but we are learning and we are taking our lessons and we are we are continue growing that's what uh, i have to say <laughs> so thank you thank it. you alkari i mean uh, i could so almost much. visualize the timeline of uh, theater uh, right from uh, you're absolutely right it it reminded me of a, a film called agni varsha where they showed that uh, they were performing uh, during the time of rigveda for a yagyas they would uh, enact uh, you know vitya and indra's uh, roles exactly absolutely correct i um, uh, also connect with the fact that you mentioned that theater is more than language a uh, couple of years back um, a great theatrician from kolkata uh, gautam haldar came here to uh, perform uh, you know one of his uh, legendary acts which is meghnath bad kabya mm -hmm. it's uh, written in very archaic ancient bengali but yes. uh, everyone got it because mm -hmm. it's more than the language so absolutely i, I relate to all of that uh, thank you for such a beautiful narrative which takes us through time um jumping to something that is very dear to me uh, i still recollect as a kid i used to go to my ancestral house during diwali and one of the things that would always take place is that we would all gather uh, just after the celebration probably the day after diwali kali puja as we celebrated in bengal uh, for something which was the village jatra and it was a very uh, important thing for us uh, that we would uh, you know take our shawls uh, cover ourselves up and uh, sit in the uh you know the open space and uh, view the jatra on, on various various different subjects sometimes gods and goddesses sometimes heroes so uh, taking that uh, point forward i would like to introduce uh, my second speaker a man who ha i had personally the privilege to work under numerous projects very very knowledgeable and same time intricately meticulous director stage manager makeup artist everything pretty much under the same uh, you know under under the same roof um, anurag mishraj uh, he is the founding member of dramatic usa so uh, anurag ji my question to you is uh, i know it's a very broad topic but could you shed some light on the various uh, folk forms of theater that exists uh, in the great country that we live in or that you belong to india yeah uh, thank you so much avik and um, um, my sincere gratitude to uh, councilor ram kumar ji ranjit singh ji and um, you know all the other panelists here for including me in this discussion it's really a privilege uh, and uh, um, alka ji talked about it uh, a little bit ago in terms of how the pandemic uh, has impacted theater and even before that as uh, various cultural changes take place in the society uh, and i'm constantly reminded of a quote uh, by john steinbeck uh, uh, which says the theater is the only institution in the world which has been dying for last 4000 years but has never succumbed it requires tough and devoted people to keep it alive so Uh, we have a rich tradition of 4000 years uh, world over in humanity and i'm really you know very privileged to be in this august company of people who belong to that category of devoted people who are working to keep uh, the theater alive and stuff like that. 
uh, i know we talked about the rich uh, uh, cultural uh, heritage of india um, starting uh, in well about 500 bc uh, through bharat muni's natyashastra and the rich heritage of the sanskrit plays uh, of bhas kalidas bhavuti shudraka ashugosha lot lot of those things um, uh, that we have inherited uh, but as india has progressed over a period of time uh the india over centuries has a large wide diverse tapestry of cultures and languages in a country that has 22 scheduled languages and where dialects change every 100 miles theater change also metamorphoses itself into various different forms um, and that's that's really the most fascinating aspect of theater for me um, in terms of seeing it how it transmutes itself adapts it to the local culture scenario a uh, theater in my mind is a confluence of three very key aspects um, it is very strongly rooted in a language it has a very strong cultural ethos and it's based in a social context so these th- at it, theater happens at the confluence of a language a culture and a society um and that changes fairly rapidly as you go along and like alka ji was talking about in terms of a history of the last 2000 years that has changed considerably and i would assert that apart from the royal patronage that used to support the classical art forms whether it be dance or classical theater like sanskrit theater it was the folk theater that actually kept theater alive and our theater tra- theatrical traditional life all through these centuries uh the beautiful part of this is it has adopted and taken many forms across as you travel through india uh, alka ji talked a lot about what has happened in the hindi heartland of uh, uh theater uh, a lot of work has happened there uh, even there there's a very very vibrant um uh, uh, folk theater which is in form of natanki swangs charan uh, in uh, hindustani urdu bundelkhandi natanki dastan goi khayal these are these are forms that they take over a period of time across various indian um, india india's um, milieu um, apart from that as you go around india each cultural area and language area has a very strong tradition of um, regional theater uh, folk theater you talked about jatra jatra is uh, one of my one of my most ardent experiences has been watching one on this on the banks of hugli once one night under solid scars so um there are committed companies that have through centuries performed there uh, again addressing lot of social lot of uh, religious uh, uh, theme based base place Mm. equally strong is uh, some of the regional theater of uh, karnataka uh, kannada yakshagana is a very very uh, uh, very very popular and very accomplished theater form um, that's popular um, it it morphs into um, uh, kuttiyattam as you move into kerala and malayalam um, if you go to orissa and bihar uh, we have versions of mayurbhan chau and purliya chau that gets impl- employed there uh in maharashtra there is a folk theater that goes around in bards and there is tamasha theater that goes uh, that happens very very often um uh, in gujarati you have bhavai based uh, performances that happen in punjab there are swangs and in the northeast india where you have assam and manipur again there are there are very specialized uh, theater forms like ankya nata and bhavna that get produced there the biggest aspect of this is apart from the fact that till about the advent of 20th century these were the primary mode of entertainment for common folk across the country they carried messages very very specifically uh, many of the uh, theaters in kerala in bengal in maharashtra in um, gujarat uh, actually participated very very significantly in indian freedom struggle in terms of trying to carry that and even before that began through the 19th century as some of the social reformist movements are taking place uh, uh, theater supported many of those very very uh, that is because apart from 
uh, being a major form of entertainment and education, um, it it was a part of two other things. Uh, at the royal level, it survived because the patronage that it received. Um, and therefore, apart from the stories that you talk about in religious preachers, they also talked about warriors. Like, for example, if you go to UP, there is a whole tradition of Ala Udal that people sing. Or if you go to Rajasthan, there are Bharts and Charans who sing glories of the warriors that have fought in, the, in, 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 in wars towards the country. Uh, but a large amount of that has stayed close to our culture and religious ethos. So the Ram Leela, Ras Leela that happened in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, Pandavani that happens in uh, Bundelkhand, Harikatha that happens in uh, in uh, uh, parts of Karnataka and Maharashtra, Baul Giti that happens in Bengal, Kirtan that happens in Marathi, um, uh, in Tamil and Telugu you have Bhagavata Mela, uh, which basically narrate the stories of Mahabharata and Ramayana and other mythological characters. There are some very, very nice characters which equal in their strength and depth and complexity to the classic Greek theatre characters kind of a thing. For example, Karan, there, there, there are almost about every form of these talks about some of those conflicted characters very, very specifically. And these have these have kind of survived over a period of time very, very actively. Um, apart from the folk theatres, uh, there is fairly strong regional and tribal theatre forms that have been very strong. Um, uh, for example, Nacha in Chhattisgarh, um, uh, Habib Tanvirji actually established Naya Theatre based out of Chhattisgarh, used local um, artists. And I remember having seen one of their performances when I was like, what, 12 year old, standing three height pyramid of people dancing on stage live was a mind-blowing event that you can't even get on the Broadway here in New York, I could say. Uh, similarly, if you go to Northeast, Ratan Thiamji spent a lot of time. He was also director of National Music Drama for a while, established the Chorus Theater and the Blossom Theater, and uh, leveraged a lot of <clears throat> uh, those theater styles. Uh, but the thing is, like, you know, um, uh, Alkaji talked about that uh, from Nati Shastra, which is very true, that Theatre involves all these forms and more. So there are many forms of uh, art which are hard to tell whether they are dances or they are uh, they are theatre. For example, if you look at a Kathakili performance or a Manipuri performance, uh, they are highly stabilized with very strong, strong costumes, movements and music and stuff like that. It's very hard to say. And even if you go... Um, to very, very classical art forms or dances like Mohini Attam, Bharatnatyam, Katha, Kuchipudi, Odyssey, all of them have a strong part of what they call Abhinaya, which is the storytelling and acting out. So uh, each one of these performances that you will see, um, uh, you know, uh, includes this. So uh, what we have in India is a heritage of very, very deep theatrical traditions and roots and a very rich tapestry of different art forms adopted across India. And it's 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 really a, a great privilege for us to get a view of that as we celebrate 75 years of our independence to really see how we have we have uh, leverage that, built on that, how we can preserve some of that cultural um, uh, diversity. Uh, as we saying, I talked about some tribal art forms, I talked about some very unique forms, and the government does a great job in terms of identifying some of these. For example, Tijan Bai, who performs Pandavani, who's, uh, has, uh, has really received a lot of support in terms of, because it's a dying art form, as you say. Uh, the establishment of uh, places like uh, National School Drama, it's one good urban thing. But I think there are uh, also, uh, like what Alkaji Singh, I would like to add to that, there are now regional locations that have come up for that. For example, Bharat Dhawan in Bhopal or Bharat Hindu uh, uh, Academy in Lucknow or uh, uh, there's an academy in Jaipur or uh, Ravindra uh, Bhavan in uh, uh, ben uh, Bangalore. Uh, they are a big, big magnet for attracting a lot of these people. Uh, and what uh, Alkaji talked about was the resurgence of Indian theater in the 60s and 70s. I think a lot of that has been enabled by the regional languages. Uh, if you if you see Bengali theater, the art movement started by Rabindranath uh, Tagore and his his team and his followers has continued for a while, adopting very strong social themes, establishing a theater-going tradition. 
the great part of it is they also took a lot of good work from the western theater as you said these companies got established that went around so people got educated in some of the western education uh, western theater forms uh, western um, plays and they adopted those from uh, uh, english or whatever languages they were in into uh, bengali marathi various others uh, i know bengali theater has a very strong tradition of breadth and experimental part of work uh, which is very largely rooted with lot of social issues you see some part of that in terms of the labor related theater that we talked about uh, that people used marathi uh, again has a very very strong um, uh, background of social theater uh, with uh, likes like vasant kankar who started writing in the early part of the 20th century uh, they also have a very strong musical heritage so sangeet natak just like in bengali also is a very strong form that that takes uh, its own um, place uh, in the theater milieu uh they call it natya sangeet and and the stalwarts of marathi theater like bal gandharv or vasantrav deshpande have been great classical musicians but have completely devoted their lives in 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 furthering the theater um similarly theaters like um uh, in 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 kannada uh, with yakshagana and many of the other fact, uh, factories uh, in mysore and uh, bangalore in hubli dharwad have really come up very very well and i would assert that a lot of the resurgence that we saw in 80s uh, was because of two things one is they are writing great works of new uh, dramatic material which are very very contemporary um we talked about girish karnad from kannada but there are people like prasanna adirangacharya chandrashekar kambar in marathi there was tendulkar there uh, jain dalvi mahesh l kunchwar bengali we have utpal sar uh, uh, utpal dad badal sarkar uh, shambhu mitra and of, of course ravindranath tagore uh, and the good part of this is if you see um, these resurgence in 17 is 80 saw a lot of cross pollination of translation of many of these works into other languages meaning in hindi i have in my career probably performed plays and about 60 or 70% of them have actually been written in another language whether it's marathi or so that way it's a great thing that some of these great plays of work of literature are finding ways into different uh parts of the country beyond their own linguistic boundaries per se and it's leading to very very interesting cross pollination that is happening uh including in hindi as well uh, uh many of them have asserted their indian identity very very strongly for example girish karnad ji has strong uh, 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 used the folk form in many of his plays very very effectively uh whether it's nagamandala or it is haivadan um amazingly done plays uh, similarly in bengal um, badal sarkar um, uh, rudrapraja sen gupta they have actually experimented with some very interesting forms based on jatra and experimental theater per se uh, what i would say now is you know um, uh, as we are now celebrating 75 years it's it, it's time for us to recognize the value of all this culture it becomes more important for us for those of us who are living outside india um, in the us uh, some of us are committed to bringing um, world class theater or indian theater to global audiences here um, and as the indian diaspora here goes um, their strong attachment to roots and language um, the efforts have started for 60 70 years um, even here in midwest we have some very very strong uh, uh, regional linguistic organization whether it is uh, bagc for bengali association or maharashtra mandals kannada kutas uh, they have matured over last 50 years and they've really done a fine job of making sure that uh, they promote these cultural forms out here in the us as well another big purpose of this and i think that is what drives us uh, all, all also in dramatic um, is to try to preserve them and pass on this cultural heritage to our next generation pan american and global organizations so basically collaborating with them preserving these uh, and lot of the indian diaspora where the next generation is actually growing up here in the us uh, if they can get a sense of the rich cultural heritage that they belong to and if some of them take uh, interest that will be um, that will really serve our purpose uh, and you know go a long way in promoting india's uh, 
cultural values um, as we kind of come on this 75th anniversary of our, our independence uh, so what i'd like to say despite the competition from uh, channels otts internet um, i think there is a committed set of people who are uh, uh, you know uh, very committed to bring uh, preserving and bringing these art forms uh, including the rich art forms of regional languages to us um, and um, thank you all for supporting this very much uh, we look forward to carrying this tradition on thank you so much anurag ji i mean it almost seemed like that in this uh, uh, diverse country that we belong to india if we just meet another individual from a different state and uh, kind of uh, talk the same tongue and mention that do you like theater i think it's going to be a quick hit and we are going to get an answer yes and we are going to start bonding so uh, that's amazing that you know you just uh, gave us a run through uh, pretty much across the country and and uh, told us about the various forms um thank you so much um i i want to uh, uh, bring up since me being in bengal uh, about a loss we had in 2020 uh, one of the great, uh, great theatrician uh, and of course an actor but he he had probably a bias towards theater shomitra chatterjee passed away and in 2019 when i was uh, uh, visiting kolkata i uh, got a select uh, selection of his plays uh, written by him and when i brought them back and i was uh, reading through especially after his demise again going through that i was stunned by the fact that uh, he did so many adaptations foreign adaptations of 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 plays across the world into bengali and and uh, he uh, i i was really uh, impressed by uh, uh how much knowledge he had about uh, you know uh, uh, global theater and bringing it to uh, uh, the local language so with that note i want to introduce my next speaker uh, pramila kumar uh, she is a person who is as energetic as she is creative one of the most uh, uh, positive and humane uh, uh, theater director uh, producer organizer i've come across uh, in the midwest she is also the founder of ekjut theater so my question to you uh, pramila is about uh, the adapted works the foreign works which are adapted in indian languages what are your views on this and uh, does any of these cater to any specific issues social issues uh, that's what i want to hear from you uh, thank you so much sovik and good evening good evening to my fellow panelists uh, mr amit kumar and thank you mr singh for this invite so sovik in fact as early as the 18th century uh, visiting western theater groups toured india to entertain the western colonial administrators and their families and these western plays particularly those of shakespeare adapted plays uh, entertained many and these were performed by the western educated students and amateur groups in various universities and it started from kolkata so the adaptation is pretty old in fact as old as the 18th century some of the key stories which got adapted by the indian theaters were krishna's diary nirbhaya arail padmasi's greece alak padmasi's uh, death of a salesman girish karnad's tughlak uh, badal sarkar's ibong indrajit satyadev dubey's dear lad just a few of them and uh, did you know that uh, uh, krishna mohan banerjee's the persecuted was the first english play in 1813 and in fact a book written in english is so much easier to adopt than its hindi counterpart or some of the other regional languages not that other regional languages and other language books have not been adapted uh, today's industry you know we rely a lot on english and uh, in this world in this global world english is an accessible language uh, as people as all of us we are coming together from varied places of arts culture entertainment different industries and different mother tongues english unites us all as nris we live here english is a medium where theaters have most to reach to most of the audiences and the wider diaspora uh, in india there are some theater groups they are very active in uh, staging english plays uh, nissim ezekiel uh, he is a renowned person who has done a lot of work in english poetry and adaptations girish karnad in the capacity of writer director and actor 
has substantially contributed to the enrich the traditions of English theatre. Uh, Ravi Raj Sagar has uh, adapted many world class stories into English and is one of the forefront theatre groups in India staging English plays. In the present day, today, uh, Indian drama in English falls slightly, just slightly short of the level uh, reached by uh, other arts such as uh, poetry or fiction. Three reasons. Theater is a combination of three other things uh, besides what our fellow panelists indicated, uh, the literary element, the technical element, and the performance element. Sometimes it becomes a challenge to combine the aesthetics of all the three together. So, because drama is essentially what? A composite art involving a playwright, the actors, and the audience in a shared experience on the stage. And sometimes to manage both of them, they sometimes fall short, but we are going there. The other big challenge, Sauvik and uh, everyone watching, is the failure to the fact that English is not a natural language of conversation in India. We are getting there. Uh, the new generation is definitely more well versed in this language besides the other. But uh, uh, it's in the making. It's a lot of part of it is in transformation. More and more Indians are writing in English than ever before. And the Indo Anglican writer is enjoying a much wider market. Indo Anglican drama has indeed a very, very bright future. Some of the excellent writers in English in the Chicago land in the Midwest area, such as Bakul Banerjee, Ravi Bala Shinoy, Deepika Mukherjee, they have created some beautiful story, English stories, and they are in production to be staged as plays. So kudos to all our writers who have made a big mark here in the Chicago Midwest area. Uh, Egjut has also been doing its part. Uh, we've adapted uh, some of the outstanding global stories uh, Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House, Agatha Christie's, and then there were none, 12 Angry Men, so that we can bring these stories to life to our uh, population and our uh, diaspora here. One of the big things I would like to quote on it is uh, sometimes the plays speak what everybody knows. Sometimes they speak what nobody says. Sometimes they open paths or unveil truths. Sometimes they challenge the way things are done or understood. Theater, as you know, all of our, uh, all of the audiences listening and the team here, is a very, very powerful channel. It's a powerful medium of communication. Uh, reading a 200-page book versus watching a 90-minute play gives a visual representation of the story coming life. And this is a very powerful medium which is used to stage, to bring awareness and bring some respite to social issues and social causes. Uh, live theater helps to promote social discourse, dialogue, and potential social change. Uh, it's a cultural phenomenon that demands that the society examine itself in the mirror. When we see a play, it's an interpretation of our beliefs, what the society is going through, what the messaging is coming through. And if we see that, if we believe in it, if we live that, there is definitely scope to make a change. Some examples, empowerment, human relations, immigration, refugees, gay, lesbians, LGBTQ, female genital manipulation, rape, mental health, are some of the key issues, some of the key social causes which have been brought to life on stage by Ekjut in the last seven years in the form of 60 different stories. So uh, really glad that this conversation is happening here. And uh, Indian theater is evolving with uh, such a large scale. There's a uh, attributions happening. The world has extended like anything, and so has the theater. We hope theater becomes a powerful tool and a communication for a lot of the global issues, including the pandemic as well. Thank you, Sovik. 
Thank you so much, Pramila ji. As you were saying, uh, one of the things that uh, Anurag ji also mentioned came to my mind, second generation. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if the theme can be Indian, but the language can be English, uh, uh, or, or even the other way around. And basically, we can break the barrier of language if we look at the themes and then adapt accordingly, whether from an Indian theme to an English language or an English theme to an Indian language, either way. So uh, that's amazing that theater can do that, and we have done that. And uh, thanks to your work, I, I know that uh, you have an ambitious project, and I'll come to that. Uh, you mentioned to a language, so I'll come to that. But uh, thanks for uh, sharing all these views. Um, I will uh, like to do something uh, now a little different than the format that we were into. Uh, I have a couple of questions for all three of you. And um, I want to uh, get your views on this. These are, um, uh, uh, yes, these are uh, form, uh, definitely related to forms of theater and theater, but these are more current. These are uh, more what's happening in the world right now, as, as many of you have mentioned about the pandemic. So my first question uh, yeah, to this uh, group of uh, speakers, uh, panelists is, um, what are your views on, uh, I know Anuragji mentioned, and, and some of you as, as, as well mentioned that, uh, after all, it's entertainment. So entertainment as theater has competition in the 21st century and the age that we are in. Uh, uh, as Anuragji mentioned, OTT and things. So what are your views of evolution of theaters into cine plays? Uh, we are seeing this in a lot of OTT platforms, and uh, uh, I, I want to know uh, your views on it, uh, your input, your challenges, or have you ever tried this? Um, so I'll start with uh, Alkaji. So in my opinion, um, I think I would pass on this question to Anuragji. He is the better judge for this question, so I think he will be able to answer oh in a very uh, different way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anuragji? Anuragji, you're muted. Uh, thanks, uh, Shavik. And that's a very interesting question. And the competition from various other forms have happened right since the beginning of 20th century when the motion pictures came in and then television and VCR came in. So we, we've been hearing about that. Uh, the best thing about the adaptability of theater is it morphs itself to the new realities of uh, what is possible. Um, obviously, uh, the new mediums, the new platforms are here to stay and there would be competition. But um, that also leads to very interesting opportunities for collaboration again, because as you see, and exacerbated more by the pandemic that we faced in the last approximately two years, uh, I used to do theater with some of the very established theaters in Chennai in India back in the 80s. And um, when we are all cooped up in our homes, we decided to collaborate again together and create a few pro pro uh, projects on Zoom. Um, along with them, cross areas. So there were people in Chennai, in Europe, in Australia, and in US collaborating together to produce something. So um, I think uh, apart from the challenge, there's an opportunity here, both in terms of reaching out to different audience, uh, even in non-pandemic times, uh, theater is morphing itself into merging uh, art forms. Uh, I don't know if you heard about a play called uh, Bikhre Bim written by uh, Girish Karnad. It's a mixed media play where half the play happens on a television, the other half of it happens on stage. Um, and the experiment he tried was using the same actor on both. So uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, hybrid that we're looking at. And... Um, uh, Theater is great at experimentation. We'll continue to do that um, even in uh, mixed formats. Uh, what has happened is people want uh, the, the, the privacy of their own watching at their own time in their own convenience and stuff like that. Uh, but it's not a social event. It's, it's, it's an experience that, uh, like Alkaji was talking about, um, Theater is also a communal and social event. You know, when we go there, you watch a play with people, see the dynamics with the audience and stuff like that. And I don't think that is going anywhere. Uh, so post the time, uh, whenever we get into a more 
within quotes normal situation and i don't know what that would look like uh, like alka ji kudos to you are holding the festival even this year with all the restrictions and uh, all the precautions that we took um, uh, i think it will change theater for the better that's 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 my hope and and i would like to add uh, a quote by nasiruddin shah on this topic i think shweta also asked a similar question so uh, unless the commercial cinema suffers a severe setback in terms of audience attendance nasiruddin ji is saying that i don't see any great hope for theater in the 1980s so this was said back in 1980s and we still feel the same we are so much addicted to like ott platform and i mean cinema and all we are so overwhelmed by this um, uh, bright uh, world of cinema that we don't give much importance to theater and today the audience is actually not more demanding they don't demand for from us so it is it becomes very difficult for us to like create good theater even if we try to do that we do need audience we do need audience to actually uh, praise our effort and be there be there to see watch witness what we are doing Uh, Pramila ji, any views on this? Oh, absolutely, so we can. You know, we've heard we've heard of this term called omni-channel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, in fact, theater is also becoming, uh, you know, as omni-channel. Uh, yes, uh, I've heard of many, many theater groups morphing into creating the same story as a web series, as short films. And uh, in fact, in one of our plays, we are having a combination, a short movie combined with uh, a lot of cine effects. and again staged all as part of a play so we are in the world where our audiences want everything in all different formats so this is something to come up for sure that's amazing how uh, creative individuals never shy away from the challenge uh, the challenge of the era and that's what all, all of you are doing here that's really uh, hats off to you morphing taking techniques taking screen and live mixing it also but at the, at the at the end of it as as alka ji mentioned uh, one of the key things of theater is audience is part of the act yes. so we need you and so we, we have to do to and we have to do what audience wants see it's the exactly. customer is what is is always best <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's true great thank you thank you everyone uh, my next question to the uh, panel is um Uh, so again another uh, kind of a combination of this emerged with some theater groups that i've seen in north america which is uh, they using uh, technology like zoom as a platform for theater uh, what are your views on it does it do justice is it okay what are your views on it yeah uh, so uh, uh... traditionally sovik when we started at least when ekjut started in 2014 it was meant for to have it staged in the traditional format uh, we did so for 6 years last year was very very different and uh, for the first time we staged our fall uh, english play with five stories uh, through streamyard uh, facebook live and uh, also a uh, Uh, youtube live that was the only instance that we did and apart from that uh, we've shied away from using zoom in a significant way because of the attention span of our audiences uh, our plays have been in person uh, i know in the pandemic itself we did do two plays last year you know maintaining all safety protocols uh, going forward i hope there are more new technical tools technology coming in so that uh, the staging of a play becomes more seamless as it is done uh, in traditional theater so that you know the experience to our audiences remains unaffected thank you um alka ji anurag ji any views on yeah this? so um, uh, 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 we at dramatech have really kind of tried to push the envelope on the technology part of it so in the last 18 19 months i think we have had about nine different events that we've happened out of which about six or seven them were theatrical productions of varying lengths um, pramila ji talked about the attention span so it's hard to kind of recreate the magic of a dramatic experience for two hours in a room because you are you are reaching to somebody through at best uh, a 34 inch screen rather or in many cases 
probably a 14 inch screen or even a 4 inch screen depending on where they're watching it right. kind of a thing so uh, you have to adopt that uh, uh, format uh, what i've seen um, uh, groups do is uh, do very interesting things uh, for example uh, natak from california did a very interesting play uh, where they did live uh with four people in their homes but it looked like they were probably in the same set um and and they had an interactive audience uh, uh response which their sutradhar was actually communicating to them in real time so uh, that that that's a great way to do that we've experimented with uh, plays with virtual backgrounds with sound effects we we merged uh, art forms like dance and music uh and live versus recorded so Uh, as much as the challenge that he provides and uh, uh, i talked about removing of the geographical boundaries uh, uh, that is what really it provides us for example uh, we did an event earlier in the year uh, where we had farida jalal ji who is one of the f- uh, famous um, uh, 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 bollywood actresses for over 70 years uh, she was uh, one of our judges in coaching the people providing feedback on an event called dil se drama pass uh, i think uh, what we should look at is the positive aspect of the collaboration that it makes i know alka did uh, brought some plays from india here so did um, uh, you know we see and we are able to see productions from not just um, uh national school of drama and many others um, i was privileged to watch places like globe theater put it on theater uh, on on stream uh, uh, right from you know uh, uk so uh, it it's an opportunity i'm sure times will change but these experiments will probably lead to a more rich more diverse like pramila is saying multi modal uh, omni channel experience we are at the fag end of our hour i think that is why uh, ranjit ji is here so uh, for, before i hand over to him uh, i want to uh, express my sincere gratitude to all the speakers here uh, and to ranjit ji uh, and for, to Ar- arun ji for uh, having this program and uh, at the end of it it's all up to you the audience because your support makes theater possible and yeah and in, in the end you know i would like to uh, say uh, one thing that theater is a way of uh, theater is a way for everybody to be together work together and feel together so theater should not be compromised this is our message to the audience and we promise to like keep bringing good theater to the audience of chicago and the midwest region that's our promise to all our audience and thank you Ranjit ji you will need to unmute yourself please uh thank you very much for to all of you we have a few questions on facebook uh, uh, which we need to take uh, uh we have a very few minutes so i would request uh, uh, the panelists to answer those questions uh, in a uh, 30 seconds to 1 minute uh, so we have a question for uh, alka ji uh, from uh, one of our questions let me see uh, uh it is from uh, one miss reena tomar she says i would like to ask about the programs that mandi theater did during covid 19 pandemic and uh, there is any uh, planned in the near future yeah sure uh, so reena thank you so much so major theaters across the world have responded to the pandemic by turning silent and dark laying off staff and canceling plays for the year but at the same time mandi theater was restless to do something great so uh, initially asmita theater back in india they started this zoom uh, quarantine theater festival via zoom and they started the, the very same day uh, india was uh, like shut down so getting a, we we got this inspiration from arvind ji and we also started a quarantine theater festival and ours was like multi language so over the period of 3 4 months we had uh, 28 different uh, good plays from around the globe and 
almost 45,000 viewers all together were able to watch these plays. And this is still on our Facebook page. You can go and watch those. So that, that's what Monday did. And other than that, we did a couple of workshops, um, Rang Vimarsh and Bihar Ka Rang Manch. And uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, and we also did one radio show also. So that's what we did during the pandemic, Rina, and hope this answers your question. Thank you. And uh, now there is a question uh, for the uh, Consulate General. Uh, so uh, it is from uh, Manisha Garg. She says, uh, the cons uh, I have a question from Consulate uh, about the kids program. She says, as Monday theaters coming up plans and any plans for uh, a theater for kids, it is for the Consulate General. So. Uh, here, I would like to quote uh, Honorable Council General. Uh, he, uh, he, as he said, uh, the consulate will consult the theater groups active in uh, Chicago area and U.S. Midwest on this matter. Uh, it is important that children of uh, Indian diaspora also learn about uh, Indian culture, including uh, theater forms. We are fortunate that there are several uh, Indian American cultural groups uh, who are indeed contributing to this effort and you all should follow our Facebook page and uh, social media handles uh, for information uh, about um, upcoming programs. So and this Rajiji, is your answer. If I, if I may add, uh, uh, in the January of this year when we did the Kala Utsav, uh, we presented a play with kids uh, called uh, Shikayat uh, in Hindi uh, which had in, uh, kids population even last year for uh, Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, we did a play with kids. So we our endeavor is to continue to engage the next generation and try and see how we can share this. So definitely, and the consulate uh, keeps supporting that throughout. Yes, that was a wonderful effort. And uh, now there is a last question. Any one of you answer uh, before I present my uh, uh, closing remarks? Of, uh, uh, it is a question that what is the difference between traditional and contemporary theater? We have very few seconds, uh, uh, very few, uh, one or two minutes. Uh, one can, uh, any one of you can answer. Um, if I if I can take a shot at that, Ranjit ji, uh, it's a constant evolution. So theater, uh, traditional theater provides us the grounding and the framework that we do. Contemporary's job is to actually try and integrate that and move forward. It's like if you were in Prayagraj and looked at the two rivers can, can, can coming together. When it moves forward, it takes along with it all the heritage that comes with it, but forges its own new path. So I think that is the difference. It's a continuum. Yeah, for, for me, the main difference is the structure. Classical theater follows a very precise pattern, uh, units of time, um, um, action and place. And whereas the contemporary theater leaves more freedom to the director. That's the basic difference in, in my understanding. And also to add to that, contemporary theater also uses different kinds of tools, music, yes. lights, to accessorize the play, uh, just not the performance itself. Right. Absolutely. So uh, here now we are uh, to conclude because we are running against the time. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 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 so uh, India is diverse. Uh, so of course is our theater. Uh, though it was uh, difficult, uh, however, Alkalji, Anuragji, and Pramila ji, uh, all of you summed up uh, the facts about Indian theatrical forms in a very comprehensive manner. Uh, in a, a short time, uh, in a few minutes allotted to you. Uh, it was wonderful to know uh, important role played by Indian theater. Mm, uh, so uh, 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 Indian uh, consulate will continue to regular, regularly showcase uh, different facets of India in association uh, with Indian American community as part of Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav till uh, August uh, 2023. And with this, uh, uh, we close our uh, webinar. Uh, thanks to our panelists and uh, moderator, Sovikji, you did a very good job. And thank, thank you, you so much, uh, those who joined us virtually. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.